This is the ultimate restoration druid guide for phase two of Season of Discovery, including stat priority, rotation, runes, talents, pre-biz and biz gear, rotation, skill books, consumables and professions, and everything else you need to know. Let's get into it. All right, then, first of all, let's have a look at what stat priority we're going to want to want, want to have as a restoration druid in phase two. First and foremost, the biggie, which is going to make our spells biggier, is spell crit, of course. Secondary is going to be healing or spell power. So this is going to say, you know, improves your heals and spell power by X. This is what we're going to want secondary. If you do need a lot more mana and you find you're struggling with mana, you could swap this around for MP5 and try and get a bit more of that. After that, then, it's then going to be intellect and spirit. And again, if you feel like you need more mana, swap these two around. But ultimately, spell crit is the biggie to make our spells heal more. And then we're going to want to do, you know, overall more healing, have more intellect and getting more mana back to increase our throughput. One other quick thing I want to go through before we get onto the really exciting stuff of runes and talents, etc. And the gear we're getting is the skill books that you can loot off mobs in dungeons in phase two. We have three as a druid. One is Deeper Wilds, reducing the mana cost of your Mark of the Wild by 50% and also increasing its duration by 50%. Very simply, it's a quality of life improvement to make this a little bit less tedious using all the time on our allies. Secondary is Revive, bringing a dead player back to life with 15% of their health and mana. Can't be used in combat. And lastly, for us healers, this is fantastic as restoration in Phase 2. Your Rejuvenation and Regrowth spells can now be active on a target that also has these spells active from another Restoration Druid or, or any other Druid. This is really, really fantastic and is really big. This is going to be really, really useful if we can get this. Looking then first at what our pre-biz gear is going to be, these are some of our options. Starting on the head, we have the Tracker's Headband, which is here. This is a, a BOE and is a world drop, and it can have up to 42 plus healing, which is huge. Other items are the Holy Shroud or the Papa Fez from Alderman. I think they did say that everything above Alderman was locked, but Alderman isn't locked, so that should be fine. We've got the Inquisitor's Shawl, which I think is from High Inquisitor, um, whatever their name is, in the Scarlet Monastery Cathedral. And there's also the Crimson Silk Shoulders from Tailoring. On the chest, we've got the Dream Weave Vest. This is from Tailoring. Don't forget to enchant this with greater mana, increasing your mana by 50. The other one is the Robe of the Magi. This is going to be a very, very expensive world drop BOE. So if you haven't got a lot of money, tailoring is going to be the way to go. Don't forget, you've also got the Robe of Power you can get from tailoring. On the hand, hands, <laughs> we've got the Arachnid Gloves, which have a random enchantment. This is going to be from Razor Fen Downs, and it has some nature resistance on, making these really useful. There's another world drop, which is BOE. Again, there's a lot of BOEs here, so I hope you've got the money for it. We can use something like the Imposing Gloves. It can have up to 31 healing. Or there's the Slick Fingerless Gloves, which are from BFD Raid. So what I'm trying to give on this list here is making sure that there's items from both the Raid and also from other sources like the new dungeons we can go into. If you have been doing a lot of raiding like me and you're pre-bizzed kit kitted out or biz kitted out from phase one, then you'll pretty much be good to go to go straight into Gnomagan. But these are really, really useful items. On the neck, there's the Triune Amulet. Um, again, this is from uh, Scarlet Monastery. There's the Glowing Eye of Mordrash. Mordrash from Razor and Downs. Or again, from BFD, there's the Jagged Bone Necklace Neck. On the cloak, then, there's a few options here. I personally would just say get the Sergeant's Cloak from PvP that you could get in Phase 1 anyway. This is really, really useful. If you can really be bothered, and these are biz, by the way, and the reason I'm including these in the list is because you don't have to go into the raid to get them, even though they are biz and pre-biz, if that makes sense, which is the Dryad Wrist Bindings. You must get Warsong Outriders Exalted to get these. And then we've got the Champion's Bracers, which are, again, a BOE um, with up to 22 healing on a well drop. On the waist, you can get the Tracker's Belt, which is, again, a BOE. Urban Silk Belt or Star Tailoring, sorry, Star Belt from Tailoring are really good. And again, if you're in the raid, Ancient Moss Cinch, I will say you should still be doing BFD because the XP is huge from it, okay? You should still be doing BFD if you can. You're going to get tons of XP and you can get some really good pre-biz gear. On the feet, we can get the South Sea Mojo Boots from the South Sea Snake Down in Tanaris. 
I don't really know if we can get this um, at that level. I would recommend just getting these extra planar spider silk boots. I do recommend you take tailoring anyway. More on professions in a bit. Spider silk boots, the extra planar ones, are the quest you do in phase one. I've done a whole guide on this in my what to do first level 25 video. So if you haven't watched that, check it out on my channel. And um, these are really, really fantastic. Going on to the legs then, it's the sole leech pants if you've been to um, BFD again, and the imposing pants of healing um, if you get, again, you've got loads of money for BOEs. Rings, I would just say use your PvP rings that you've already got. If you've got the Seal of Rin, which is from Phase 1, the way to get this is do the Dead Mines and pick up an unsent letter off Edwin Van Cleef's body on the boat at the end. And this starts a big quest chain, running around Stormwind for 500 hours, and you get a really good ring called the Seal of Rin. There is the Seal of Sylvanus on Horde, but it's not as good. That paired with the PvP ring, like the Law Keepers or Advisors ring, is really, honestly, fantastic for pre biz for weapons, then, you can either go with the Staff of Jordan, Rod of Ancient Sleepwalkers. These are both going to be very difficult to get. The Rod is from Twilight Lord Kelris, but it's a 4% drop chance, and I've seen hardly anyone actually get it yet. Um, otherwise, I would say just get the Hand of Righteousness from Scarlet Monastery. If you're like me and you've been doing a lot of dungeon gearing um, you know, and leveling, then Scarlet Monastery is going to get you a lot of really good gear for pre-biz. Trinkets, again, just use what you had from Phase 1, whether that's the Acolyte's Void Pearl. If you don't know how to get this and you haven't got it yet, then it's from Akame. So it drops off Akame, the end of the BFD raid, and you have to roll for it, obviously. It starts a quest, you hand it in in Thunder Bluff, and you get to choose one of them. If you do want to choose a different one now, there's a healing and DPS one, etc. You can actually trade this in for 75 gold uh, in Booty Bay in Phase 2. Mind Expanding Mushroom from Black Fathom Deeps uh, still is great for pre-biz. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's go on to now the biz we're going to be getting from Nomagun. So starting off on the head then for biz is a bit of a contentious one, in my opinion. You can either take leather working and get the neuroconductive channeler's hood. Of course, you then have to drop your um, spider silk boots if you've already got them. Uh, so this increases damage of healing and spell damage. And when you use it... It will allow your magic regeneration to continue while casting and increasing the healing done by up to 50 for 20 seconds. If you want to stay with tailoring, you can also go with, which I think is better anyway, is the Neurolinked Arcano Filament Monocle. The reason I'm saying you can use level working is because it gives you a lot of extra good stuff. <laughs> but I do think the Neurolinked is going to be best with tailoring. Just wanted to give you both options there. So this increases spell, and da spell damage and healing done by 22, increases some MP5, so mana per 5 seconds, and this is going to reduce the mana cost of all spells by 50% while increasing healing by a ton as well. And this is on a 10 minute cooldown and that effect lasts for 12 seconds. The Pendant of Homecoming with some MP5 and healing on with Intellect and Spirit is on the neck. These are from Nomagun, by the way. Um, if I don't say where it's from, assume it's Nomagun. Otherwise, I'll explain. Generously padded shoulder pads giving healing. That's from Nomagun as well. Cloak of Invention from Nomagun, increasing healing and some MP5, again, is really, really good. We're going to go for the Hyperconductive Shimmer Shirt set on the chest, legs, and boots, giving you spirit and more mana uh, with the two and three set. Again, this is why I'm saying I don't think mana is going to be that bad in phase two. I really don't. And that is why I'm saying in the stat priority to go for more crit and healing and that. But do feel like you can take more mana, etc. if you need to. You can actually get, um, I think it's 100 mana now on the enchantment, sorry, not 50. This is really, really good. You can, on the braces, go for the Tinker's Wrist Wraps. This is from Nomagon. Or, slightly, slightly simming less, is the Dryad's Wrist Bindings. Again, the pre-biz one from Warsong Outriders Exalted, which is going to take a while to grind. So, just going straight into Nomagon could be the way to go for that one if you don't have a lot of time. Defibrillating Staff is fantastic. This increases healing done by 35, increases your arcane damage spells by 26, and the staff will sometimes be able to shock a dead player back to life outside of combat. If you can't get this, the other way to go is going to be the Gear Mender's Grace. Obviously, it's not Biz. Um, sorry, it's cutting out at the top here. But the Gear Mender's Grace basically increases healing by up to 20. And then in the offhand, you would put the uh, Beacon of Hope, which is a well drop. And if you can't get that, it's going to be the Repair Manual or the um, third off will be the Necro Nomagon. And these two are from Nomagon. Really interesting, it's still coming up that sick fling, fi, slick fingerless gloves are going to be best, increasing healing down by 22, um, and nature spells. So if you're using your wrath and you've got loads of mana still, using the Fury of the Storm Rage rune, then this could be really, really good anyway. But overall, it's still biz, even if you're not doing that. Mechmender's belt, 
MP5 and healing, the two um, other set pieces you can see here um, for legs and boots, the hypercharged gear of innovation. This is a unique equipped ring that you're going to get from Nomagun. So you can only have one of these in each class and spec. You can choose which one we get. This one is what we're going to have. It increases intellect, spirit, nature, and arcane resistance. And it's going to increase healing by 15, 13, sorry, and increase some MP5. Lawkeeper's PvP ring is still really fantastic. The miniaturized combustion chamber. The equip is going to increase healing, and this also on use is going to channel between 1 to 150 health into 1 to 150 mana, which is really, really amazing. But this is on a 30 minute cooldown, unfortunately. Acolyte's Void Pearl is still biz in phase two. Remember, if you've gone from balance or tanking, etc., or DPS, you can trade this in for 75 gold in Booty Bay to get the healing one if you have previously chosen a different one. And we're going to go for either the Mind Expanding Mushroom for mana, which again is from BFD. However, if you want to do some more damage, again, spamming out some Wrath, if you've got a ton of mana left over, you can get the Idol of Wrath from Nomagun, increasing the damage of your Wrath spell by up to 2%. And that is it. Let's go on to runes and talents. So starting off with talents, we are mainly going going down the restoration tree in phase two of Season of Discovery. First five points going into Mark of the Wild, further improving the effect of this buff we're putting on our allies by 35%. Going down onto the next one, I'm going to put five points into reducing the cast time of our healing touch. This is a pretty simple single target spell that we can use when we need to do a sort of average amount of healing on one of our raid or party members. I'm going to put three points into reflection, allowing 15% of our mana to re generate while we are casting. And this again is going to further improve our mana throughput on the healing we can do. I'm going to put one point into Insect Swarm, and this is really awesome because I love spells that are a bit more like support roll that aren't doing direct healing. The enemy target is swarmed by insects, decreasing their chance to hit by 2% and causing some damage. So it's going to mean we can do a little bit of damage as a healer. But also, the main effect is it's going to reduce their chance to hit onto our tank or whoever they are targeting. As you can see, we do need to use some more points to get further down in the restoration tree. And therefore, I'm going to put one point into subtlety, reducing the threat generated of your healing by 4%. And honestly, it's not like, you know, the best thing in the world. But hey, it's a nice thing to have. And we needed that one point. I'm going to put three points then into the effect um, improving the effect of our rejuvenation by 15%. Rejuvenation is a heal over time or hot, if you're not aware. And we can spam this a little bit um, on our targets on the raid. If you don't know Druid that well, we're going to be using a lot of heal over times on our targets. More on how we're going to be using those in a second. I'm then going to put two points into Tranquil Spirit, reducing the mana cost of our healing touch and tranquility by 4%. And then what I'm going to do now we've unlocked it is put one into nature swiftness. This we can activate every three minutes to make our next nature spell become an instant cast, which when we need to do a big amount of healing quickly, this can be really fantastic on, as a cooldown. I'm going to put five points then into gift of nature, increasing the effect of all healing spells by 10%. You know, the, over all of our healing spells, this is absolutely fantastic and a absolute must. Now, the remaining five points, I would say is up to you. And there's going to be two different ways I am going to show you where we could put these. You could put the last five into improved regrowth, increasing the critical effect chance of your regrowth by 50%. This is a heal over time and a single target heal all in one and is really useful. How much we're really going to be using it? I think really you should just try it yourself and see how you do with mana. Um, when we go for the runes, that's what I'm going to talk about really how we're going to be using these spells altogether. The other option, taking those five back out, is to put another three into here, reducing that mana cost further. And if you are struggling with mana, I would say to do this and then just put one point into improved regrowth and then go into swift mend which consumes a rejuvenation or regrowth effect on the friendly target to heal them um, with more healing this is 20 percent of your base mana is a lot at this point to use and i do think it's too much mana at this point but i just want to give you guys some options um on that so again your rejuvenation or regrowth on the target it will consume that heal over time on the target to do more healing with swift mend other option with these last five points if you're doing a lot of dps remember um because we are going to have a free wrath more on that in a second is just reducing the cast time of wrath by five seconds of improved wrath over here in the balance tree but what i'm going to be choosing for now is going to be the five and improved regrowth onto runes then like i've just been saying about the free wrath Fury of the Storm Rage is going to be on the chest, reducing the mana cost of Wrath completely. And whenever you're using that Wrath, we have a 12% chance to make your next healing touch instant. 
Healing touch, remember, is this spell, it's a simple single target heal we're going to be using. So if you have got a lot of mana, well actually, sorry, mana doesn't matter, if you not aren't having to do that much healing and can get some DPS in, we can actually reduce that uh, mana cost of Wrath, making it completely free, um, and then get some free healing touches. Um, sorry, not free, but instant healing touches out of that, um, which is where it gets almost more competitive, putting those five points into improved Wrath over here um, from those instant healing touches. But I've, again, I'm going to leave that up to you. Uh, make your own decision on that one. On the Leg Rune, Life Bloom... Uh is interesting. Reduces the global cooldowning of rejuvenation and life bloom, and you gain the life bloom agility, uh, ability. Heals the target over seven seconds, and when it completes its duration, uh, it then blooms and does some more healing on the target. And the druid regains half the cost of the spell. The effect can stack up to three times. No one's really using this. I'm not using this. I don't think it's that good still in phase two. The other option you can do then is taking Star Surge, which is such a teensy weensy amount of mana. It is so little. Um, Star Surge does a ton of damage, and I would say to take this if you can get the damage in. Take Life Bloom if you want, but really, Star Surge is going to be a lot better, I think, to get a little bit of damage in as a healer, considering how little mana it uses. On the Hand Rune, it's going to be Wild Growth. This is an AoE, or multi-target heal. Uh, heals all of the target player's party members within 40 yards over um, an amount over seven seconds. The amount healed is applied quickly at first and then slows down as Wild Growth reaches its full duration. A lot of people, including myself, are actually just spamming Wild Growth in the raid with a few rejuvenations, which is these. It's a simple heal over time, putting some rejuvenations out onto your raid members, spamming Wild Growth and getting tons of kind of party-wide heals out. And then you could be using your Star Surge and Wrath um, with the Wrath getting some free improved healing touches. Sorry, I keep saying free. It's not free, it's instant. It's still going to cost you mana. Um, getting a few instant healing touches out for you need some single target healing. And also using Nature's Swiftness to make your spells instant, which you could use on something like Wild Growth. Um, that is how I would say to heal. You have also got Nourish, which we're going to be taking on the um, Waste slot. Heals a friendly target, and this is going to heal an additional 20% if you already have a Rejuvenation, Regrowth, Life Bloom, or Wild Growth effect on the target. So basically, if you've got one of your other heals already on the target healing them, this is going to do a lot more healing. Um, we don't know exactly how much mana it's going to cost. I haven't actually got it yet myself. Um, I'm doing all this guide from simming and, and researching and testing, etc. Um, so... I think this is going to be a really good spell that we're going to use and go with on the Waste Rune. We don't really have another option as a healer anyway. And then on the last one, we're going to use Dream State. Our damaging spell critical strikes grant you 50% of your mana regen while casting for 8 seconds and increase nature damage dealt. This one again further increases the viability of using this improved Wrath talent and using Wrath to get the free... Im Instant, not free. Oh my god, what is wrong with me? Instant improved um, healing touches as well from the Fury of the Storm Rage. So and that's going to give you a bit more mana regen as well. You can see now why I've been going on about how I don't think mana is going to be a big problem in phase two for us. Um, and this is the build I would go with. So again, using some rejuvenations, using your nature swiftness, probably on like a wild growth, you know, getting that out instantly, spamming a lot of wild growths, doing some star surge to get some damage in. If you are taking this talent for Improved Wrath, spamming those out, remember they're free because of the Fury of the Storm Rage uh, rune that we're getting, which will give us free healing touches. Um, this is all going to be really, really good. Um, and I think this is how we're going to play it. This is how I'm personally going to play it in Phase 2 of Season Discovery. I think we're going to be really, really good this season. I'm really, really excited. Looking now at Professions and Consumables, we've got a few options here. For the Mana Potion, it's going to be the Greater Mana Potion, which you can get with Alchemy. And there's also the Lesser Arcane Elixir, which is a generally really good one for all casters, increasing spell damage as well. And based off of the build I've just showed you, this is going to be really useful. On the food then, if you want some more mana, go for the Sage Fish Delight, restoring six mana every five seconds. However, if you want to get 12 stamina and spirit, I would go for the Blood Spider Sausage. No, it's not called, it's just called Spider Sausage. And you can farm the white spider meat in Dust Wallow Marsh. There's tons of them. They drop maybe one in every three spiders. And it's quite easy if you can't afford to buy these straight off the auction house. Again, that's going to be 12 stamina and spirit. And that is spider sausage. It's red. I keep calling it blood spider sausage, but it's not. <laughs> and then let's have a look at some other things we can get. And by the way, if you do guys have if you guys do have any questions at all regarding classes, rotations, spells, talents, 
runes, absolutely anything. Whether it's retail classic, it doesn't matter. I'm here to help add on to UI, all of that. I'm here to help. Please join my Discord where we have over 2,000 people playing WoW together. No pressure, all very beginner friendly, etc. Raiding, dungeoning, leveling, all sorts of people going on. And also, we will answer any of your questions. If you do want to go one step further and support me even further, you can actually join as a member below or join my Patreon, again, link below for that, where you can then open a VIP ticket in my Discord, get all of my videos before everybody else, and I will actually help you sim. I can review your logs for you in these VIP tickets, and I can also help you set up your complete UI, and you can import my UI if you like. I also do now stream on Twitch for Season of Discovery at Heavy Heels. There's a link down below for that as well. If you are interested in watching me play in Season of Discovery, where I can also answer any of your questions. So looking at professions, then now I've got that out of the way, I would say to take tailoring because of the neuro linked arcano filament monocle or whatever that I showed you in the gear, um, simply because of that. And obviously the extra planar pre-biz boots as well. However, tailoring does go very well with having something like enchanting, which is why I recommend it for this here, this sigil of innovation. Basically, you can use these to deal 20 increased healing for 30 minutes. I don't think they persist through death and it is a 30 minute cooldown, but these are fantastic and it needs 225 enchanting. Another option is alchemy because of this here, the mildly irradiated rejuvenation potion, restoring mana, health and increasing damage done um, by all spells. However, it doesn't increase healing. Hence why I do think this enchanting one is better, especially like I said, how tailoring and enchanting are only like, you know, don't need a gathering profession with them. Um, so this would be my recommendation for those as well. And that's pretty much it, guys. That is how we're going to play Restoration Druid in Phase 2 of Season of Discovery. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And like I said, you can join my Discord and talk to me there and other members of the community. We're going to be leveling, playing, blah, blah, blah together. And what are you what are you going to be doing in Season of Discovery? Are you going to be leveling through um, questing and open world? Are you going to be mainly doing dungeons and living in the Scarlet Monastery for the next two days? And how excited are you for the new runes? Let me know everything. Don't forget to subscribe and leave that thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. I am doing all class guides, by the way. I've spent literally weeks simming and testing everything. So if there is anything else you do, do need, make sure to check out my videos below for that.